Hey guys, the latest poll has concluded and the winner is the Azrath Arsenal at Tiesh, so that's what we'll be doing today. At Tiesh is to casters as the Ashbringer is to paladins. It's the ultimate caster weapon, firmly etched into Warcraft's mythology and lore. It's made appearances in the books, the movie, and of course World of Warcraft itself. Wielded by iconic characters such as Aegwyn, the last guardian Medivh, and Khadgar, it's the weapon of choice for the Guardians of Tirisfal. Its appearance is pretty simple, at least in comparison to the other vanilla legendaries. It's a long, wooden weapon reinforced with arcane magic and stylized with a raven carved into the head, the symbol of the Guardians. Not only does it serve as a conduit of power for its wielder, but it's also capable of opening a portal to Karazhan, the former home of the Last Guardian, and even allowing transformation into the form of a raven for transportation. It holds incredible power, but only the strongest can bring out its full potential. After Medivh's corruption and death, the weapon was cursed and passed around to various members of the Kirin Tor, who were the mages of Dalaran. However, anyone who wielded it died shortly after. In light of this, and with the line of guardians coming to a close, the Kirin Tor judged the weapon to be unwieldable and locked it away behind barriers of magic in their city of Dalaran. And on top of this, since it was such a powerful artifact, a guardian would also keep a watchful eye over it and protect it from any would-be thieves. It laid there for many years until the Eridar demon lord, Archimond, attacked the city. A failsafe triggered with a barrier guarding Atiyash, and the staff was shattered into many pieces and spread throughout the land. The shards, 40 in total, were collected by the Scourge. The archaeologist, Bran Bronzebeard, found the base, which he then lost to the old god, Cthune, when he was exploring the temple of Ankiraj. Way to go, Bran! And Kel'Thuzad, the Lich Lord and commander of Nexramis, held the raven head of the staff. Which brings us to World of Warcraft. This weapon was obtainable by players with the original Nexramis, which was released in patch 1.11 and removed in patch 3.0.2 in light of its remake in the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. It was the first caster legendary in the game and the first legendary to be obtained through consistent and hard work, rather than just a lucky drop like the other vanilla legendaries such as Thunder Fury and the Hand of Ragnaros. As mentioned, it all started with the Naxxramas raid. This was the final raid for classic World of Warcraft, and was appropriately the toughest out of all of them. Nearly every boss was an extreme challenge, and with AQ-40 being the previous raid, it was like the 1-2 death punch to raiding guilds back then. Very few cleared it before the release of the Burning Crusade expansion. Part of this was due to the expansion being announced so quickly after the raid released. Everyone knew that any gear they got would quickly be replaced in their journey from 60 to 70, so there was very little motivation to trudge through this raid, let alone complete a legendary staff. So, only the most dedicated and skilled would clear through all of it, and even fewer would see Atiyash completed before the release of the Burning Crusade. But, as hard as it was to complete, it was also pretty straightforward. As mentioned before, the Scourge captured the fragments of Atiyash after its destruction in Dalaran. They ended up in the hands of actual bosses in the raid, and each one had a chance to drop a legendary item called the Splinter of Atiesh. Reading the tooltip, you saw that if you combined 40 of these, you could reform the frame of Atiesh. Only one person could loot these at once, so guilds had to somehow pick just one lucky raider to receive the legendary staff. This was done by the old DKP system, veteran status, rank status, no matter what though, you can bet that there was a lot of drama to be found since it was such a highly sought after weapon. The lucky classes that could end up using it were the Druid, the Priest, Warlock, and of course the Mage. So you raided and raided and raided, 
And once you had all 40 shards, just as promised, you form a legendary item called the Frame of Atiyash, which is actually a quest starter. Clicking on it would give you a quest that sends you to Anachronos. You may remember him as the main quest giver for the Scepter of the Shifting Sands questline. You could find him outside of the then closed Caverns of Time, and before you could talk to him, you had to be neutral with the Brood of Nazdormu faction. You typically had this if you were actively raiding AQ40 though, so it wasn't too bad. The only tricky part was that the quest didn't actually mention Anachronos. It just said go find someone who can cleanse the frame. And with no quest markers, it was no easy feat. This was back in the day where a lot of the quests were just go find this guy, so it either took a lot of scouring, word of mouth, or thoughtbot. But, either on your own or with the help of the internet, you eventually tracked him down. He remarks that the staff still holds great evil, but to cleanse it, we must first fully assemble it. He gives you a pretty simple follow-up quest. Obtain the base of Atiyash from the final boss in the AQ40 raid, C'Thun, and the head from the final boss of the next Ramus raid, Kel'Thuzad. You know, the typical quest. So, like I said, really straightforward, but still really difficult. I won't go on with how tough this was, but I will note that even though it was one tier behind, AQ40 was still very difficult. In fact, when it was first released, C'Thun was thought to be mathematically impossible to beat, even with the best gear and perfect execution, and in fact was only killed after a big nerf. The only upside was that it was at least a 100% drop as long as you had the quest, and it would also drop for multiple quest bearers. So, a challenge that only the best could complete, and if they were successful, there's just one more step, to cleanse the staff. It's still the epitome of all evil, and it will destroy its wielder, so the next step was to head to the Stratholm dungeon with four party members to purify it. Near the undead side, next to a fountain, you could find a patch of consecrated earth. The quest holder would have to stand atop this spot and perform a short ritual, and at the end, a demon named Atiyash would spawn. This was the evil that's been inhabiting this staff for all of these years at the behest of Sargeras himself. You'd have to take it down to finally cleanse this staff once and for all. It was a pretty tough fight with just five people. The demon itself dual wielded a legendary. He had dual swords called Adonisus, the Reaper of Souls. If a player disarmed the demon during the fight, you would actually drop it on the ground and you'd be able to wield it against him. It had an item level of 100 and some crazy attack power, but it was a conjured item and was only usable inside of Stratholm. Unfortunately, it disappeared once you exited the dungeon. If you were successful, you returned to Anachronos, and he gave you the cleansed Atiyash as a reward. Each class got a slightly different version, but in general, it had tons of spell power, stamina, intellect, spirit, hit or crit chance, and an aura that buffed your party members, which was pretty unique at the time. And you could also open a portal to Karazhan in the Deadwind Pass that you and your party members could use. Although there really wasn't a reason to be here until the Burning Crusade expansion when the raid actually released. A little fun fact though is that if you entered the Burning Crusade Karazhan and you walked up to the Shade of Iran boss with Atish equipped, you got some extra dialogue. They revisited this in the Legion remake as well with the Shade of Medivh fight. The only thing it's missing is the raven form. Maybe they didn't want to steal the druid's thunder. As I mentioned, this was obtainable all the way until patch 3.0.1 in Wrath when the raid was remade, and anyone who obtained it before then also got themselves a feat of strength to show off. And similar to the other weapons in this series, it also has a card dedicated to it in the official trading card game. 
Appropriately, only the druid, priest, warlock, and mage classes could use it. As I mentioned, it also appeared in the Warcraft movie. They ended up having an auction for all of the props, and this one sold for nearly $5,000. Let's hope it was cleansed first. And today, lore-wise, it's in the hands of the Archmage Khadgar, so it gets a little awkward if a player wielder interacts with them. Very few survive today, as you would imagine, so if you see one out in the wild, make sure you press F to pay respects. Well, that's about it. Kind of a shorter video for the standard of the series, but as I said, it's pretty straightforward. Still though, I hope you found the video interesting or entertaining, like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.